Eric Dieter's the Bulldog on Class X Radio, 88.9, 89.1. How many uh, people broadcasting in the Tri-State? It's such a big deal. you got to have two signals to broadcast the show. Uh, what a day I had yesterday. I'm in a good mood. Uh, today, of course, is Friday, so everyone's in a good mood. You know, the way I look at Friday is this, folks. It's really this simple. I'm going to be a philosopher for a minute. If you've had a lousy week, Friday is awesome because your week is over. And if you've had a good week, Friday is awesome because you can celebrate. Either way, Friday's a great day. Is that a pretty good assessment, Garrett? Absolutely. And it's been a bad week. You had a bad week? Bad week. I bet it's ready to... I've had a great week. Get to the weekend. Yesterday was absolutely incredible because not only did we do a great show, and then I did a lot of work. I had a very interesting court appearance, which I'm going to share with everybody out in Boone County representing David Dooley. And we are working on, and this coming week, I met with a casino client. Uh, This coming week, a press release is going out on 3.30 on Monday. We're having a press conference with the casino workers. It's going to be awesome. And then last night also, I, working on a very personal case, was able to obtain some information that was very helpful. I have a long day. I get home at like 9 p.m., and I had to go out again to do something that I needed to get done. And it's just amazing how right when you're at the end of a long day, and I learned this from working on the farm. You know, you might be working on the farm, and you go in, it's 7 o'clock, you're dead tired, long day, and then something happens, and you got to go back out and do a little bit more, and that's just called life, and that happens to all of us. As we start the show, and we like to start the show by slowly rolling into it, i got to ask my compadres here a question. Fire away. I want to get your all's feedback on it. Now... One of the not-so-secret, well, I guess it is kind of secret, things about me, is I'm kind of a softie. Are you? And I'm also very conscious of relationships. I really am. I am a really good, at least I look at myself as a good friend to my friends. And I also look at myself as a good low-maintenance friend. I'm not a needy person. Now, I... This just popped in my head, and I want to get your all's feedback on this. And I'm going to send this same message to some other people. But I sent a text message, Denise and Garrett, to a buddy of mine, just out of the blue. And I've ran into him a couple times recently. And we had a good talk about some things. And he showed some loyalty to me. So I sent him out of the blue this message, this text. Just want to thank you. For our low-maintenance, loyal, unconditional friendship. My question to you, is that cool or is that gay? As long as you didn't tell him you love him, I guess it wasn't gay. Wait a minute. This is in this day and age, guys are allowed to say you love each other. No, it's cool. I tell him I love no, him and he loves it's me. It's cool. I'm not saying that. I mean, I don't say it a lot, it's just special moments. I was gonna say, it you can't say it all the time, then it'd be gay. You say it. Once in a great, just, just to say, man, I'm glad we're friends. I just want to thank you for our low maintenance, loyal, unconditional friendship. All right, that's yeah. totally acceptable. That's cool. So I did not have my first broke back moment. There no. are moments like that with your friends. I had one over the summer. All my buddies, kind of for the first time, I really feel like, told kind of each other how much we meant to each other. You better and that do it before ca- something bad happens. Well, it, 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 it kind of took something to, bad to happen. It was it was one of the friends, or actually twins, both are in our group. Mother got cancer, and it was like, we all kind of said, man, and my, it was the first time one of our parents has really been in a mm, trying my, yeah. situation. So it's, in my family, and I'm sad to report this, but it's true, when you blend a family, me, three children, wife, three children, and That's you start Brady out bunch. even when you're young. It, yeah, it, no, it's not the Brady Bunch. It ain't easy. Because everybody thinks differently, likes differently. Heck, you can't even pick a movie that everybody agrees but to. But you can't do that in but, a normal family. I mean, exactly, normal, normal family. family. But anyway, we've done, we did, a, we did a really great job, really, I think. But you know what's sad, but also special? 
after her son died in that tragic car accident, everybody, and I'm saying every member of the family, the seven left in the family, me, my wife, and all of our the five children, everyone let go any of the crap. It was weird. Yeah. It was it's more it was important. Weird. I remember I remember sitting telling my children, I said, Man, do you not realize it just gotta let go? And I'm telling you, our family is close as it's ever been. It keeps getting better. And the reason being, stuff that we, like, let bother us, each one of us, yeah. we just, like, uh, don't go there anymore. And I notice, like, when something slips out, people go past it quicker. In other words, it's like, ah, God, I shouldn't have done that, you know, so. Right. There's just things that aren't aren't important, and once you realize that. Well, now that we've had our deep lovey dovey yeah, moment for yeah. the day, can we, have a tra- can we have a traffic report? Yeah, nothing going on. That's a great traffic. Okay, report. there you go. Right. I like that. <laughs> a lot of cars on the road, though. I it's had Friday today. It's Friday. Oh wait, wait. I lied. Hold on. Please hold. Some. I just hit the the update button. Let me click. Ready? Okay. You, you, you all know now. There's no. just a broken down car. That's Wh- all. No accident. Where? Broken down car. 75, southbound at Shepherd. Our traffic report is merely Denise reading from a laptop. You guys now know that. Well, I'm not driving around on the road. <laughs> Man, Where's the helicopter? Like she's not really in a and helicopter. We have like a, we have a, have like a delay because she's trying to find the site. No. Can't do, do your job. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, he could do it. All right, just I can pull that As long as you know up. what you're looking at. Sure. Now, we're going to cover football. We're going to cover Romney coming to town. We're going to cover some cases that I have that are in the news that you're going to enjoy. Jack wagons. And we're going to have some jack wagons. But until then, let's take a slow ride on Class X Radio. Eric Dieter's the Bulldog on Class X Radio. Let's have a little fun. Quote of the day. Facts do not cease to exist because they are ignored. Alderus Huxley. That's a pretty good one. Voters. I'm only going to mention uh, a few things in the Today in History because they're just too good. All right. First, President Reagan signed a bill establishing the Martin Luther King Day. How do you like that? That's a pretty big deal. You got a piece on that, Garrett? I do. In 1968, Martin Luther King was gunned down by a brutal assassin. His life cut short at the age of 39. But those 39 short years had changed America forever. The conscience of America had been touched. Across the land, people had begun to treat each other not as blacks and whites, but as fellow Americans. And in his words, from every mountainside, let freedom ring. Let it ring. President Harry Truman in 1948, and it's the famous Chicago Tribune, front page, Dewey defeats Truman, and they were wrong. We have conclusively proven that a free people can successfully look after the affairs of the world. We're here today to raise the flag of victory over the capital of our greatest adversary. Harry Truman was the In man. doing that, and then finally, we must remember. And I think that. Uh, I would have been a cheerleader bulldog, but I, I went into sportscasting instead. 1898. I'll bet you that you didn't know this. Cheerleading is credited with beginning at the University of Minnesota. Wow, who'd have thought? The University of <laughs> Minnesota. We actually have the first cheer that they ever wrote. Really? Uh, here, a clip of it. Here. Awesome. Let me see what, awesome. See what it sounded like. Awesome. This was the original cheer. It was cold in Minnesota. Makes or sense. It does. Makes sense. <laughs> Total sense. That's where that came from. Yeah, that's it. Uh, My of course. Goodness. Of course it was. And famous birthdays today. I mean, it's an all-star cast. I mean, let me see. We got four. We have enough almost for a baseball team. Uh, David Schwimmer, who who has not found work since uh, since Friends. Friends. <laughs> Katie Lang. A little weird. Uh, 51, and this is somebody I had the hots for big time and heart to heart. Stephanie Powers. Woo! Pat Buchanan, Mr. Comudgeon, 74. James K. Polk was the president. Now, let me tell you some fun facts about James K. Polk. J. 
James K. Polk was Tennessee. Andrew Jackson was his hero. James K. Polk started the Mexican War. I mean, he started the war. It was an unjust war. And, of course, we got California. And the year after the war ended in 1848, we discovered gold, which was once Mexico. We got Texas. I mean, James K. Polk, and, and this is this, he only served one term. He said, I'm out of here. Interesting guy, old James K. Polk. Uh, Warren Harding, who was an Ohio newspaper editor and is considered one of the worst presidents of all time, apparently had mistresses while he was president. Bill Clinton read his biography. Is that what it is? And he died in a hotel room in San Francisco. We don't know what he's doing. And that's when Calvin Coolidge became president. Marie Antoinette, who famously said, let them eat cake and lost her head. And then last but not least, Daniel Boone. Daniel Boone. Hey, we ought to find that. Uh, yeah, we ought to find that. Da- uh, or Jake, we ought to find the Daniel Boone theme song. Daniel Best Boone Parker. theme. Best Parker, baby. Uh, we have no military deaths to report. Hoorah. It's National Deviled Eggs Day. And get this. Look for Circles Day. It must be from a freaking nursing home activity uh, director. Oh, you know what's going to happen? Look for uh, circles. Look, there's a circle. What well, was a zero? Everything you look at now, if you think about it, you'll find circles. And it's also national. Watch out for the blondes who look for circles days. <laughs> <laughs> look at the wheel. It's a circle. I can see it. We do see Denise. <laughs> do you have a traffic time, I already time did it. staring in the face? I, I already Man, did I hope that. everybody's listening because our show's superb today. Is it? Okay. Accident in Batavia, 132 at Stone Lick Williams Corner. Who picks the names of these streets? Um, also in Westchester, 75 southbound at Shepherd. There's a broken down car. Garrett. Thank you. What do you have to say about broken down cars? One of the things, <laughs> one, of the, <laughs> one of the things, when we used to go out and like hose people with water from uh, fire extinguishers, we would ask them where was menopause lane to kind of get their attention and mess with them. Where was menopause lane? Nobody knew, ever knew where menopause, menopause lane was. Lane. Uh, today, partly cloudy high of 52. Saturday, showers high of 49. Sunday, it's going to get up to 49 for the Bengals game. And I am an idiot. I am buying my cousin Josh's four tickets to the game. And why? I have no freaking idea why. How did that freaking game sell out? I don't know. I am appalled. It is sold out? Well, then I need your tickets. <clears throat> All right, we'll see. Because I can't go. <laughs> oh, if, wait, that's the parking Here's my rule with that. Part. Here's my rule with that. <laughs> family first. But if nobody in the family wants them, which is a good likelihood, you can have them. New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg gets the first ever Mega Mega Jack Wagon Award. You Jack Wagon? He endorsed Obama and said because climate change might oh. have caused a hurricane, he thinks Obama is best to tackle that issue. What a jack thing. I God. read that yesterday and texted you right away. You I did. mean, I'm, I knew you'd seen it, but it was, ugh. And how about this guy? So dumb. Joseph Lowry, a preacher who gave the benediction at Obama's inauguration, said, America's going to hell. Well, I agree with that, but uh, it's only certain Americans. And claim white people might not get into heaven for things that are happening during the campaign. Well, how about the black people, Lowry, you jack wagon? You jack wagon? And Obama supporters at a rally in Daytona Beach with Michelle Obama. And I'm not making this up, folks. Wake up. Guess what? They said they were chanting, Hail Obama. Uh, Hail Obama. Hail Obama. Wagon? That's scary. You mean they were saying hell with Obama? By the, <laughs> by the way, coming up at 745 today. And I just call him Alex T because Tree Antafilu. How about that name? Or what I tell you, I I've tried, I've studied it at WLW. I used to write it out and put we you know where it was supposed. It's hard to pronounce, but this guy is the chairman of the Hamilton County Republican Party, and he does a great job. And we're going to have him on at seven forty-five to discuss the importance of Hamilton County in the presidential election. Uh, some oracles, NFL and NFL Players Union donating a million to the Red Cross. Guess what? All Obama does is go out and pass out our money. Uh, You've been awarded Oracle status. And to show that we're not biased, New New Jersey Mayor Cory Booker uh, tweeted that power wasn't on at her home. A neighbor did. Half the block was. He told her to relax at his house, charge her devices, and kick back and watch a DVD. About 12 people came over and hung out. Now, that's being cool. That is. Mm -hmm. So, Cory Booker, you get Oracle status. 
Obama is in trouble with the Obama campaign. Ha 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 ha. Uh, Christopher G. Adamo, it is abominable that the callous ruthlessness of Ambassador Stevens' Muslim murders was ultimately enabled and over time even exceeded by the heartless indifference of Obama and his minions. Worse yet is that such coldness is typical of his governing philosophy on every front, and thus is the message that he fervently seeks to withhold from America until after Election Day. dun 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 dun, dun. Status. Before we play this wonderful song that uh, we have picked from Bill Spry's playlist. By the way, Bill, this is a good song. A couple comments about Obama yesterday. It makes me mad to watch him wearing his commander-in-chief jacket all day yesterday. Did you see that? He had his commander-in-chief jacket. He's wearing it around when we know that all commander-in-chief let some of our boys die on American soil in Libya. I mean, it all just made me mad. The other philosophical or political philosophy question I have is this. Why would we want to elect, anybody want to elect Barack Obama when we know, I mean, this is a fact. People need to think about this. He is going to be embroiled in a scandal that will go on for a year or more on this Libya issue. That ain't going away. And after the election, there's going to be Senate hearings, congressional hearings, and when the truth comes out, it's going to be bad news for him, Hillary, Panetta. Why do we want to elect a president that's going to have that hanging over their head? Bad, bad move. Do you not agree, Denise? No, I agree. I know you follow geopolitical events as closely as I do, so it's important to get the woman's perspective on everything that I say because they just don't want to hear from a sophisticated rhetorician inebriated with the exuberance of their own verbosity. They also like to hear from the blonde traffic reporter. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. And with that, we play outfield. Say it ain't so. You're a good sport, Denise, <laughs> on Class X Radio. <laughs> Eric Dieter's the Bulldog on Class X Radio coming up at 745. We got Alex T., the chairman of the Hamilton County Republican Party, and we'll discuss with him the importance of Hamilton County in the presidential election and other issues. Uh, until then, let's in- continue our fun. Beer for kids. In 1632, two gallons of beer were included in the weekly, the weekly ration for each child in the children's hospital in Norwich, England. How come they don't do that at children's hospital across the way here? Wonder if it helped them sleep. Maybe it helped them be happy. Well, you're laying more. in the hospital sick, and a little bit of beer is going to help you out. It's got it's got malt in it. It's got oats in it. It's got hops in it. Cheer them up. Cheers me up. I was going to say, Bear I would think it would make, good. Yeah, make them feel a little bit better. I think it's good anyway. But maybe not. How often do you sit down and, and sip a beer, dog? Oh, uh, maybe twice a year. Really? Yep. Oh, I maybe twice a, well, a weekend. Day. No. I know, I got <laughs> Twice I an hour I, for Denise. She's sitting here with a beer already, right now. Yeah, that's it. Mix it with my coffee. If I had some Kahlua in my coffee, it'd be good. Very happy person. Yeah. Gotten into Bloody Mary. I'm going to have some Bloody Marys tomorrow morning for the UC game. I'm excited for that. A little tailgate action. There you go. I'm glad that you went back and forth here a little bit so I could get in my um, Shakespearean mode. I did some breathing exercises so I could do this. So uh, today, you know, sometimes Shakespeare is so good we have to share it. So here it is. If I, my lord... For my opinion bleed, opinion shall be surgeon to my hurt and keep me on the side where still I am. Whoa, that's good stuff. You know what that you know what that interpretation of that is uh, there, Blondie? Uh, no, why, why, don't, why don't you the tell me? The interpretation, the interpretation of that is, <clears throat> if he's gonna get hurt by having his opinion, well then let him be hurt with his opinion. Do you know, I, I'm going to do this on uh, video simulcast. Do you know, uh, as a lawyer, sometimes you, and, and a radio talk show host, it's good to have a grasp of some biblical verses and Shakespeare, Lincoln, Churchill, so you can impress people. So you sound sophisticated. And, and I, yes, yeah, so you can sound sophisticated. And I actually can quote some Shakespeare. And my favorite Shakespeare is from Julius Caesar. And uh, this is, uh, uh, when it comes right down to it, this is, when Cato was basically saying that uh, they're worried about losing the battle to uh, Julius Caesar because Caesar has basically declared war on the Senate because the Senate declared war on him. And how cool is this? 
Now, I want the Romney campaign to be listening to this. This is awesome. There is a tide in the affairs of men when taken at the flood lead on to fortune. Omitted, all of our lives are bound in shallows and misery. We are at that tide and we must take it as it serves or we shall lose our venture. Oh, it's one of my favorites too. Interpretation. (laughs) When you've got the momentum going, you better take advantage of it. Yeah. You hear that, it. Republicans in roll Ohio? With it, baby. The tide is at your back. It's time to roll with this tide. And if you don't, you shall lose your venture. Isn't that what they're doing? Love I mean, it. they're coming in full blast tonight, all of them. And I, I, I thought I very much think that that quote. I got, remember, I got to quote Alex T to see if he knows that. Uh, mm. Clint Eastwood was on Hannity last night. Uh. I wonder if we got that. There's some pretty good stuff from old Clint. Let me see if we... Uh, and I still we... think he should have been Josie Wales instead of Clint Eastwood at the Republican National Convention. That's just my thought. Doesn't he always sound the same? Anyway? But he said there was something suspicious about the way Obama defended his administration's actions in Libya. And I say, hell yes, there was. You know, Barack Obama is a jack wagon, according to Bulldog. Willie Nelson. Uh, I'm tired of waiting on you, Jerry. Uh, the legend yeah, received the first ever Willie Nelson Lifetime Achievement Award from the Country Music Association last night during the CAM, CMA Awards. And I have to just say this. When I went to bed, because I went to bed at 11, got up at 2. I've been up since 2 a.m. That's why I'm Jack Wayne. Is that what it is? What? So any, I, or let me see. What William said is it looks, he goes, it sounds like somebody had his crack and Wheaties this morning. But anyway, I'm slap happy. But she was watching these awards, and I'm like, are you kidding me? These freaking music awards. Now, I do like Blake Shelton and him and his wife, Miranda Lambert, won both, you know, entertainer of or, or a woman of the year award. And he was Blake Shelton was entertainer of the year award. And, and then they honored Willie Nelson, who looks just like Mike Ponzer, my buddy, Mike Ponzer. I swear to God, he looks just <laughs> like him. Ashton Kutcher and Demi Moore. Do you know that neither one of them has filed for divorce? But they think that maybe they really ever, never did get married. Like it was some like some neighbor really? married and has no power. Yeah, isn't it kind of weird that they've moved on and nobody's yeah. filed for divorce? It is. Uh, David Letterman last night on government Governor Christie and Obama working. It took hurricane force winds to blow a Democrat and a Republican together. Together. <laughs> Joe Biden presented last night's top ten list. It was the top ten gaffes of Joe Biden's year. Caught it with, they added, they had added on. It was a top 29 list. Uh, uh, good, uh, good things about voting early. And ladies and gentlemen, now to present tonight's top 10 list, the vice president of the United States, Joe, Joe Biden. Turn on the thing. There he is, Joe Biden. Come on, hey, Joe. Jay, thanks for having me. Before we begin, I, I, I just hope everything's come along all right in New York. You've been devastated. Shut up, Joe. Jersey, and, uh, and just so everyone's thinking of you, and we're doing everything we can to help. Thank no, you're you very not. Much. I appreciate the kind words, as does uh, do all, everybody here in the tri-state area. All right, top ten good things about voting early. Uh, Vice President Biden, take it away. Uh, number seven. In a less crowded polling center, there's plenty of room to stretch out, linger, and relax. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always looking for a place to linger. Yes. Uh, number six. If you vote early, you don't have to pay taxes. No, I'm sorry. I didn't I'm know that. Told that's not accurate. That's not accurate. <laughs> being told. Being told. He's being told that that's not accurate. Uh, number five. Biden would Big be good great. incentive. Biden would looking be a great to mingle? guest. Find that special someone on the early voting line. Yeah, that's right. I have wow. to admit, if Joe Biden could come on our radio station, I would love to have him. He'd be a hoot. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe when he, when he, when they lose, we can get him on here. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> when he's no longer veep. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, our song now, which is also from the Bill Spry playlist, Fleetwood Mac Everywhere on Class X Radio. Here's the Bulldog on Class X Radio. Give us a traffic report, Denise. Okay. Still just dealing with the broken down car on Southbound 75 at Shepherd. It's really not causing much of a problem. Doesn't look like there's um, much of a delay out there either. Heading in maybe northbound 7175, just right at the bridge. That's it. It's All Friday. Right. It's it Friday. Be you got it. Uh, turning to local news, uh, Beachwood only dismissed three players from the team. They didn't dismiss off it. Only 15 for tonight's game, and they're hosting Bracken County. 
So they could win with 20. They could probably win with 11 players going both ways. Pick out 11. Uh, so they didn't kick off 18 players. They only kicked off three. Uh, this Saturday, the Northern Kentucky branch of the NAACP is going to have its Freedom Fund Gala at 6 p.m. And then the dinner is at 7. The keynote speaker is Tracy Hunter from Hamilton County Juvenile Court. She's been in the news a little bit lately, wanting some additional help. Curtis Fuller, the news anchor, is going to be master of ceremonies. And I'm the main sponsor of this thing, and I didn't even get mentioned. Well. <sighs> Got to talk to my buddy Jerome Bowles. But the back of your head is I want my paper. money back. Nah, I didn't do it for news. I did it because it's the right thing to do. Uh, and what is the inquiry trying to suck up to me or something? They got two pictures of me in the inquiry. One's the back of my head and one my handsome chiseled face with cheekbones. Uh, I'm joking, guys. I know what my face looks like. Uh, this, you know, this, this weirds me out. I agree with the decision. A Hamilton County jury yesterday voted not guilty for Forrest Tomer II. He was the guy that was trying to help the girl in the wheelchair, who's a comedian, Allie Bruner, get some publicity. And I want to say this. It was the right decision. It's not a crime. But I have to admit it. A little it was a weird of, case. It's a weird stuff, yeah. man. I mean, it makes me uncomfortable. I would have been uncomfortable if they would have come uh, up to me and I done would that. have been very uncomfortable. I, I, I don't think that's funny. I just think it, it would have been awkward. I think it's kind of weird. And does anybody know where Jake Slagle is, who's yeah. part of our morning team? Because I haven't seen him all morning. And he's, I know I'm, I know he's on the payroll, but does anybody know where he is? I just figured he was is behind Is he sleeping us all in a morning. cot or something somewhere? He's putting the legs on the desk upstairs. Ah. He had to go get the power drill out of the car. I had to bring my drill in. So There he is. There he is. Oh. oh, okay. See? Ah, See? There. Look at that. Oh. We knew where you were, Jake. We were messing with you. You know that, don't you? He was working hard. He we, was don't finishing. You to, we don't want you to turn into a blind did traffic you build, reporter. Did you, build, did you build the other chair? Everything's set up. Did you get the second chair built? Okay, well, I think our office is complete then. Seven. We got offices now. 17-year-old shot. By the way, my show is the most expensive show in the tri-state <laughs> to produce. I'm telling you right now. A 17-year-old Sean Frachetti died at the scene after crashing his 2005 Ford Crown Victoria into a utility pole off State Route 741 in Clear Creek Township. I uh, just want to send all the best, regardless of the facts and circumstances. I don't care. Um, all the best to his family, friends, loved ones, community. Sucks. Rest in peace, Barbara Howe. The body of the 87-year-old missing since Sunday afternoon was found inside the trunk of her car Isn't in an apartment complex. So sad, so sick, so messed up. Let's find who did that and let's... That's just unbelievable. Take him down. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, I'm going to save the uh, Kid Rock to perform at Romney Rally for Alex T. How about this? Uh, Channel 9 reported that police arrested Jeffrey Fellman Wednesday in Hamilton when they met him to exchange two IEDs. He handed the undercover officers two modified oh grenades. Was arrested at the scene. He had 15 to 20 PVC pipe bombs. Oh, my gosh. And other bomb-making materials. This is a guy, Al-Qaeda? Jeffrey Feldman. Unbelievable. Uh, Batavia Elementary, congratulations. You're close today. After 200 of you have an unknown stomach or illness. I can't, that's just, I saw that this morning, too. Like That is unbelievable. You don't like the unknown stuff. you know? No. Now, this is a very interesting story, and I'm going to try to do it tastefully. Always remember when I make comments about this, I have a brother, a year younger than me, that has cerebral palsy. So I'm very sensitive, but at the same time, because he's a public figure, I can think he can handle a little bit of joke. Uh, you think, Bulldog, what the hell are you talking about? Well, here I go. Finally. The legendary singer and musician. musician can you talk? Stevie Wonder will appear with President Obama. And you know we decided we're not going to... Uh, announce Obama's events, but this is an exception, at Fifth Third Arena on the UC campus Sunday afternoon. And the question is this. Is this the blind leading the blind? Ha! <laughs> uh, nice. <laughs> Blondick. Remember the time that Even the, uh, Blondie got that one. She did get that. She's laughing off camera. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I'm right here. I'm not. I'm laughing into the mic. Let's put it that. Have way. you ever seen? They've left Stevie on stage before, all by himself at like some award show. 
You seen that? And he just sits and there. He all just happy. Sits he there. there. He's like, oh, one, of my, one of my oh, buddies. God love him. Sensible Don. You know Sensible oh, Don. Oh, we need, we need to get Sensible. him in here. I've been asking him. I've been bagging him. Sensible Don, to this day, swears that Stevie Wonder and Ray Charles aren't really blind because he's seen them walk off the stage <laughs> without assistance. Maybe kind of they're just wearing blind people's sunglasses. Don's That's a conspiracy a, theorist. Unsensible, insensible. It's the opposite <laughs> of sensible. By the way, our good buddy, uh, speaking of other talk show hosts, Willie yesterday, this was hilarious, man. Willie calls <laughs> Hannity. He's calling Hannity. He's, like, he's telling Sag he's going to get Hannity on the line, all right? He calls the number, and Han- a woman answers. And Willie admits he doesn't know, you know if it's his house or whatever. A woman answers. He goes, uh, is this, he says, Hannity's wife's name. Uh, no, this is Jennifer. Uh, is Sean there? Uh, you've got the wrong number, Willie. Or Bill. I mean, call. It was freaking hilarious. Oh. Then he later got a hold of Hannity and he said, who was that? He goes, uh, I don't know. My wife's friend. So what it sounded like, this was so funny. It sounded like Willie like accidentally uh. called his lover or something. Right. I mean, it was hilarious. Because uh. she acted like she knew who he was. Oh, she knew who he Yeah, he said, oh, no, Bill, this is, you got the wrong number. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Sag man wow. was letting him have it. It was good stuff, man. Jeez. And, you Those know, Hannity's two. like Mr. Straight Lace. You know, he doesn't take jokes. Oh, uh, my, one of my wife's friends? That's <laughs> oh, funny. Oh, no. Uh, Ken Blackwell says the election results could be delayed by 10 days in Ohio. Come on, Ken. We don't want to hear that kind of stuff. Why? I don't know. Have we done a traffic report? In this segment? Yes. Not really, but you, you know do, what? Can you do it? Do you have your computer laptop I traffic have it. up? You know, the, the thing is, I don't just read whatever is sent to me. I do you look. You interpret it. I, I look at it. Okay. I try to figure it out. 7175, yeah. you're slow from Buttermilk on down to the bridge. Really not that heavy. It's just it's a little bit heavier traffic. I shouldn't say it's that slow either. Um, um, the rest of the really tri-state, not looking too bad. It. Still pretty green. Can, yeah, I hear you. I'm going to put a word in for it. Are you? Yeah, actually. We're oh, go ahead, Denise. Talking. We're just what's that? Huh? Hmm? We're talking about whether New York's going to take you with us. I just told him that I'm going to put a good word in for you. Oh, I said there's no chance you make and it. She said no chance that you make the cut. He was being hey. to you. Yeah, that's okay. You know, Garrett and I are staying. Garrett and I are staying here. You're not going uh, here. You? <laughs> no, I'm not I'm going to right down and off to NYZ. <laughs> get, <laughs> get myself a penthouse apartment. There you yeah, go, baby. Penthouse apartment with a. Well, the nice view of the skyline. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I got to do a happy birthday to three family members. This is weird. Why is it weird? On the same day? On the same day, my sister Sarah, oh. who's two years older than me, but I will not say her age because she's a woman. My sister Celia, who's like five years younger than me. And my brother-in-law, Jack, who's married to my sister Susie. All three have a birthday today of November the 2nd. How you like that? But he's not married to one of the si- sisters that's the same age. Correct. That's the same a day. A separate one. Wow. So three of them. Well, that's crazy. All on November When you have two. a family like that, you're one of 11. Yeah, can I? So multiply. I mean, that's 22 of you. Can I give a birthday shout out to my late oh, of grandmother? You can. Of oh, course God you can. God love her. Graham Boeing. There you best go. lady in the world. Happy birthday to Happy her. Happy birthday, Graham. Uh, little Ready life for a song. Ready for the song? So. Ladies and gentlemen, the American Jury, another Bill Spry special, which I selected from the list. One of my favorite Bruce Springsteen songs. Barack, if your people are listening, you're going down next Tuesday on Class X Radio. Eric Dieter's The Bulldog on Class X Radio, delivering radio superbity to you, which is only interrupted by traffic. <laughs> So let's go ahead and get that traffic report out of the Boo. way. You know what? The people that are in their cars, stuck in traffic, listen to you longer. Do you do. realize that's the best time well, to sell you, advertising? Well, will you announce a traffic accident or some clog up so they slow down? Some clog up. Hopefully their toilets are flowing okay. Anyway, 7175 right now. Just slowing down really from Dixie on down to the bridge. Not a very heavy spot there. Southbound 75 just between 74 and Mitchell. So in that area, that's where the delays look like they're showing up. Really, everything else looking pretty good. No accidents. We like to hear that. Uh, before we dive into sports, we missed a few things that are worth mentioning on pop culture front. On Sunday night, uh, because there's no use watching the Dallas Cowboys and the Atlanta Falcons because my Cowboys suck. 
Uh, 8 o'clock on the National Geographic Channel is the world premiere movie, SEAL Team 6, The Raid on Osama Bin Laden. Uh, yeah, what timing is that? Uh-huh. But hmm. guess what, folks? Because it's shown by National Geographic, apparently it's an interpretation of the SEAL Team 6 raid on Bin Laden. It's going to show elephants, damn booties, Tarzan, and SEAL Team 6. Damn uh, booties? Take down Bin Yeah, damn booties were involved in it. <laughs> uh, also, next week, Skyfall, 2000 and, uh, 007, Skyfall premieres. At the movie theaters, I'm looking forward to that because Daniel Craig is my favorite Bond guy. Also at the movies, Wreck-It. Actor John C. Riley is the voice of Ralph. Wreck-It Ralph premieres. That'll be a big hit with the kids. And Denzel Washington uh, premieres with Flight. I saw the premiere for that. He takes an airplane and turns it upside down to land it. It's hmm. pretty cool. Uh, Kentucky, they topped Northwood last night, 93-61. to 61. Archie Goodwin, we got another great point guard, scored 22 points. Nerlens Knoll scored 17 points, blocked 36 shots, and had 96 rebounds. I think I exaggerated. I was over too. They're going to be horrendous. Alex Pothras scored 11 points, uh, 15 points by sophomore guard Ryan Harrow. I'm telling you right now, loaded. I mean freaking loaded. And, and that big guy, uh, the, the guy seven-footer that played receiver and safety and football, Oh, my. Collie? Oh, my God. It's just going to be incredible. Louisville beat Pikeville. Big deal. 93-57. Uh, Ryan Ludwig is officially a free agent. We think about that. He had a big year for the a, Reds. You know what I'm hoping he's going to be like? Johnny Gomes. He had his one year. Get his money. See you later. Well, Kurt he Schill- was a lot more consistent than Johnny I, Gomes. Yeah. I, they, they found their left fielder, and now he's yeah. gone. Yeah. Uh, Kurt Schilling, Rhode Island has sued him for racketeering and conspiracy, um, approving a loan guarantee of $72 million for his failed video game company, 38 Studios. i got to ask you a question. Is Obama suing Solyndra for fraud? No. Schilling suing? No, Schilling is getting sued by the state of Rhode oh. Island. And he I- lost it all. I know. I can't believe that. The Chargers, and we hate Phil Rivers, the third or second most hated player in the NFL, Tops the Chiefs 31 to th- uh, 13. Rivers had a good night, 18 to 20 passes. Threw a bad pick, though, at the end of the first half. In but- high school football, Highlands plays Boyd County. Are they going to win? Blondie, you graduated from there. They they seem to always win. All right. I don't know how good Boyd County is. They you seem guys- to always win. That's good go. analysis right there. I don't go anymore. I really don't. These are the playoffs. Uh, Connor is at Montgomery County. Uh, Covington Catholics at Rowan County. Uh, Cooper has to go to Anderson County despite winning their division. That's BS. Campbell County plays at Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Simon Kenton goes to Bryan Station. Holmes at Ashland Blazer. Beachwood at Bracken County. They'll win. Dixie Heights, Henry Clay. And, of course, over here in Ohio, Cole Rain up next versus Xavier, 7 p.m. Saturday. Cole Rain versus X. Who's going to win, Anderson, man? Cole. Uh, no, I Xavier. X, 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 X. Moeller at Hoover Heights. Bowler. Elder at Sycamore. Sycamore. Elder. <laughs> uh, let me see. Lakota East. Springboro. Lakota East. Springboro. Lakota West has concluded its season. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Spring Turpin. Burl. Turpin. Did you mention Turpin? Uh, Tippecanoe, I heard. Yeah, Tippecanoe at Turpin. And Tyler, too. Yeah. Madeira at Clinton Massey. Edgewood at Winton Woods. Where's Clinton Massey? It's in Clinton Massey. <laughs> ah, yeah. Uh, NCAA football scores last night, Ohio 45, Eastern Michigan 14, Miami, Florida 30, Virginia Tech 12, Middle Tennessee 34, not north, not south, not east, not Middle. west, not south central, north central, northwest central, Middle Tennessee 34, Western Kentucky 29. NBA schedule, the only two teams worth mentioning, Miami at New York. Go Heat. Clippers versus the Lakers at 1030. Uh, NCAA, we have all of these in our uh, newsletter. I'm going to hit the highlights, folks. Uh, Louisville, Temple's at Louisville at 12 tomorrow. 
That's worth mentioning. UK will lose to Vanderbilt at 12 tomorrow. I know there's a lot of Michigan folks around here. Michigan's at Minnesota. Air Force at Army. Miami, Ohio at Buffalo. That's at noon. Syracuse at UC at noon. Is Syracuse any good this year? No. Uh, what else do we have? 3 o'clock TCU at West Virginia. This is my team. Pittsburgh at number three, Notre Dame. Uh, Georgia, number six, Ole Miss plays there. Pitt's got two three well, two starters out. Well, yeah. They just got arrested, assuming they'll get well that's probably they really got out. Uh Iowa at Indiana, three thirty PM. Illinois at Ohio State, you Buckeye fans. Penn State at Purdue, you Sandusky fans. Uh Number four, Oregon at number 17, USC. That's a big game. They're going to beat USC, too. Yeah. Now, here's the other two big games tomorrow. 8 p.m. tomorrow night, Oklahoma State, number 24, the Cowboys. At number two, Kansas State. And here you go. The game of the week. 8 p.m. I'll be home watching on Saturday night. I'll be honest with you. I just go to movies on Saturday night. We kind of go Friday night now. Of course, I haven't been in two weeks. It's on my social calendar. But we are staying home and watching football on Saturday night, and they have some games. Alabama at LSU on an 80-foot TV. What better entertainment you could have than three pole dancers? Yep. Hope those kids were listening. They might be driving to school. We're talking about people that... Uh, listening on the bus. Totem right? poles. Indian totem poles. I was just going to... Paint the totem poles. Okay. It's entertaining. Uh, Sunday's NFL schedule, Denver at Cincinnati at 1 o'clock. It's a sellout. Baltimore to Cleveland, Arizona Green Bay, Chicago at Tennessee, Miami at Indianapolis, Carolina at Washington, Detroit at Jacksonville, Buffalo at Houston, Minnesota at Seattle, Tampa Bay at Oakland, Pittsburgh at the Giants. Come on, Steelers, beat the Giants for me. And Dallas at Atlanta, 8.20 p.m. on NBC. And there's your sports. You got anything you'd like to add to all that sports? Uh, not that I can, uh, not that I can think of. The Lakers are zero and zero uh, and two. We talked about it. They, haven't, they didn't play you last night, so nah, they, yeah, not much. Yeah, I got to ask you guys another life observation question. It has to deal with exes. Garrett, you don't seem like a guy that keeps a girlfriend very long. You're always a bachelor in it. But do you ever it's have true. issues like when you have a girlfriend about like you don't like their exes or they don't like your exes. It's a real issue in a relationship, isn't it? The exes. Especially like... Except Denise because she just married her high school sweetheart, the only guy she ever dated. But now he's an ex. Now he's an ex. Does Do boy do boyfriends get jealous of the ex or and does his girlfriends get jealous of you? <clears throat> Answer that question based see. upon whether they're listening or not. Uh, well, that's just what I was going to say. I don't think his... His new girlfriend is listening because he's been dating her pretty much. But my understanding oh, and, is she and, doesn't and, like me very much. And we have much. to announce this. Can we announce her last name? No. Okay. Uh-uh. See, you guys. Uh-uh. Uh, it's, a good, it's a great last name. Her name is Laycock. Laycock. <laughs> Laycock. Now, I got, That's I'm, just a good last name. That's like now, semen. Now I got to ask you this. I got to oh, ask you this. Horrible last Is she jealous of you? My understanding be, is be that arrogant, she. Be arrogant. Be arrogant. No, my understanding is that she is, but. That's not my fault because she started dating him the mi- the minute we signed our divorce papers. You but guys we were divorced, she, just our separation. I'll tell you something that's creepy is these couples and whatnot that get divorced and they like hang out together with their exes and their See, other boyfriends. That is freaking weird. No, now man. come on. Now come on. I, I mean, was just about have to. Have you s- ever double dated with oh, your Oh, God, ex? no. And I would never would. But my point is. and, and I, I hate offered, the exes. I, I've offered. The exes should be hated. I've offered. Boyfriends, to him, girlfriends, no, spouses. No, 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 no. You should I, hate I the disagree. Exes. Nope, I disagree. Because my wife hates mine and I hate hers. Well, that's your problem, not mine. I don't. My my ex is fine. I've you know got to deal with him the rest night? of my life. I told my wife last night. I wish we would have started dating in the third grade. That way, she would never had to go out with all the guys that she well, went out your, with that she shouldn't never gone that, out that, with. That's uh-huh. your see. That's your problem because as far as the but I'm the not ex insecure goes, because I know I am the cat's meow. I know she forgets uh, about all see, this. That's that what she's I was going to say about that yeah. though. You guys seem to be still close. We Somehow, have three kids together. Well, we have to deal with each yeah, other the rest kids, of our lives. We still have benefits. We, no. We still, we have to be able, no. Friends and with you benefits? Can get along. No friends You can with, get along. No. You can get along. I don't believe in friends with You can benefits. get along without being Those like, Those kind of dummy. benefits, the, the, Denise. Get, well, I, what, what kind of benefits? This is so appropriate Those that I brought this up. Benefits. I get it. Friends with benefits, no. So, so appropriate happen. I brought this up because our song is Roger Daltrey giving it all away on... T- on Class X Radio. You have to be able to get along When with we your come ex. back, we're going to have some rock and rolling discussion, but not about exes. 
last <laughs> X rated. Eric Dieters, the Bulldog on Class X Radio. Want to promote something here? Worthy of promotion. What might that be? I uh, wish you were here. A Pink Floyd tribute band is going to be at Bogarts in Clifton Friday, November 9th at 8 p.m. Cost $12. Do I get to go down there and introduce them? Well, we can, we can certainly try to arrange it for you. If they want me, I will go. If they want you. If they want me, I Anybody, will go. Anybody, if you want... No, well. <laughs> I'm selective. I just won't You're selective introduce, on the type of music? I just, won't, I just won't introduce any band. Well, you know what? My, I even talked to my boys about this because both of them love Pink Floyd, so I think it'd be an awesome thing to... I might even take them to go see it. Environmentalists are recommending that New Jersey not rebuild everything on the Jersey Shore. Because rising seas and changing weather weather patterns are likely to hit the coastline more frequently. I agree. Let's not do that. U.S. birth rates, all-time low. Man, oh, man, we need more babies. East Coast gas shortage. Gas stations are closed and will most likely be out of gas for the next week. Due to problems distributing the gasoline from a terminal in New Jersey hit by a storm. There's going to be anarchy and chaos. Let's hope there's anarchy and chaos before Tuesday so they vote against Obama. Uh, New York power outages. Though the majority of the 649,000 without power in New York City and Westchester as of yesterday will have power restored by the weekend, a number will take an extra week. Holy cow. 67 D.C. Metro bus drivers were caught dozing off while driving buses on the city streets. That's really freaking nice. What the heck, man? Uh, Ex-Penn State President Graham Spanier has been charged with perjury for covering up child sexual abuse allegations connected to the Jerry Sandusky scandal. The state attorney general said he and other officials knowingly testified falsely and failed to provide important information and evidence. And this is bad, but it's freaking funny. Obama canvasser charged for groping woman. Denver Post Luke Buchanan reports... uh, Ah, Ah, it's not reports. 24-year-old Luke Buchanan of Washington, D.C. was charged with unlawful sexual contact after groping a 21-year-old woman's breastuses while giving her an Obama campaign sticker and has been fired from the Colorado Democratic Party. You know, you always got to be worried about the guy who volunteers to put the stickers on. I was going to say. I mean, the guy that volunteers (laughs) to put the stickers on is always the groper. He's going to take a little grab. He's going to cop a feel while he's up there. Have you ever had somebody put a sticker on you and cop a feel, Blondie? I've had somebody pet my dog and cop a feel. Of the dog or you? Me. What? Yeah, I was holding my dog and they had to kind of, so not the sticker thing, but petting my dog. That is disgusting. That's a good move. (laughs) Keep that in mind there, Garrett. Garrett, man. I like that. Garrett, you're unbelievable. How about a traffic (laughs) report from Denise Johnson? Channel 9's extraordinary traffic reporter. We hired away by doubling her salary. Is that it? Yep. Yeah. Grand Avenue at Lehman. There's an accident there on the Norwood lateral heading westbound at Paddock. There's an accident also on Hamilton at uh, Ronald Reagan. And then still dealing with a disabled, well, this is another disabled vehicle at Reed Hartman and 275. And it says that it's just off on the shoulder. Tra- rest of the traffic in northern Kentucky, northbound 71, 75, slow from Dixie to the bridge. And over on 75, just slow right around the 74, merge on up to Mitchell and southbound, kind of from around Mitchell on down. And other than that, everything looking pretty good. Very good. So far, anyway. All right. Um, I have all kinds of nice life observations this morning. You do? To stimulate philosophical discussions. Um, (laughs) Have you been watching the television commercials, Garrett, where they're promoting catheters? And they're saying, these catheters are so much nicer and so much less painful and everything else. Have you ever had a catheter? No, I've one, heard they're miserable. One time, I had a bruised kidney. This was when I was 15 years old. I was in a car wreck, and I was in a bruised kidney, and I woke up with a catheter, and I was like, what? Mm. What? You know, you're 15. You're like, what? And I'll never forget this old nurse that was 96 freaking years old comes in one day, <laughs> and she just grabbed a hold and just yanked that catheter right out, and I'm like, ah. I can't imagine what it must be like to always – I mean, always have to have a catheter because of, you know, whatever you got going on. Well, the only thing is, I don't understand, when when she pulled it out, what, how old were you? Fifteen. Okay, well, you were probably just a wimpy boy, that's all. 
Because they, there's a ball no, in there. No, Denise. No, no, no I Denise. The, guys, you, I've you know what a catheter is, Denise? Yes, I know what it is. They put. They. I know that. I've had to have them, but there's a ball it's inside of it that pumps up. Easier for you guys. Up. There's a ball inside yeah, it's it that pumps for you. up. Your plumbing's so bigger than just, ours. She just wanted to get back at him. He probably so, did something to her or said, know, called her an old lady, and she just yanked it out with the ball still blown up. Uh, and and that, that would hurt. Think about no, it. No, we have a small tract. It's called a urinal tract. <clears throat> Let's use the scientific terms. We're on uh, the radio. Men cannot It's called feel. the urinal tract. Okay, go ahead. And they rip it out of there. Yeah. And it hurts. Only when you so piss them off. But these some people have to do that to themselves. Completely. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Man, there's such wimps. We guys are wimps. If that's I pass all. out on the radio, if I pass out on the radio, why, I apologize. That's why God gave You guys are used to getting women. stuff stuck up there. We don't <laughs> get that. How, Karen, get control yourself. <laughs> so there's a better way they do this now, it though. I'm happy to hear that in, the in case same I ever place. He was referring to tampons. There's yes. but the actual I want to urethra, clarify that for the those urethra things. track is still just as small. There might be other openings. It just but hurts as far more as for guys. the actual urethra you track, all, it's the same why size. Why did you guys bring this up? Let's get to politics. politics. I don't think we did bring it up, did we? Hmm. Go ahead. Jake, do you have a comment Polit- about this? Wait a minute. Politics and urethras. Oh, go ahead. I was wondering, would you rather have a colostomy bag? No. Oh, or, Lord. And those are sad, man, because that those smell and change them. And I know if you people, had to, if you had to pick, I've never if you had, had to have one to do. For oh, the rest no. of your oh, life. God, no. Give me the catheter, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I had a friend that had the bag because he had a... Not, let's issue. talk about politics. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> According to Wall Street Journal, Mr. Romney has treated voters like adults and offered them a true choice about the future. He is promising change. And for once, that abuse term doesn't mean for the worse. Mm-hmm. Former Secretary of State James Baker on the possibility of recount. By the way, James Baker is probably the one person that's been involved in government and politics that I admire more than anyone else. He went from Reagan administration, Bush administration. Baker's a smart dude. And he saved little Georgie Jr. down in Florida. He said there are a few states where recounts are possible, claiming that recounts could trigger a repeat. And he also talked about how terrible the economy is. Latest poll, Rasmussen, Romney 49, Obama 47%. Fox News has it dead even. Economic recovery more likely under, according to ABC News, Washington Post, Romney 54, Obama 47. Overall voter preference. ABC News, Washington, Obama 48, Romney 48. It's too close. And I want to remind everybody, coming up at the 745, we're going to have Alex T., the Hamilton County Republican uh, chairman, to discuss the importance of Hamilton County because it's very important. Claremont, Hamilton, Butler, Warren, very critical. To prove how critical it is, uh, when we talk about the rally, they're bringing in everybody but the kitchen sink into Westchester tonight in Butler County to just prove how big and important it is. Uh, Obama slammed Romney for past fares at a campaign stop in Wisconsin. He said, in closing weeks of this campaign, Governor Romney has been using all his talents as a salesman to dress up those very same policies. You know what, Barack? Stick it. And isn't it nice that Barack Obama has to go to Wisconsin to campaign, and he had to go to Colorado, and he had to go to Vegas? I hope the internal polls show they're going to lose. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, we now have a former member of the Fleetwood Mac band who left to go on his own. And he's a re- he died last year, sadly. Did you know that? No, I did not. My favorite song of his is Ebony Eyes, and my wife gets mad about that. She likes when I sing it, but she doesn't like it because she has blue eyes. So she wonders mm. why I like Ebony Eyes. But this is Bob Welch, Sentimental Lady, on Class X Radio. Class X Radio. Before I get rolling here, Denise, give us a traffic report. Well, just uh, actually been looking at it the whole time we were on break. Westbound on the Norwood Lateral, there's an accident right around Paddock. And also northbound Hamilton at Ronald Reagan, Grand at Lehman. Now, if you're heading northbound 7175, you're slow from buttermilk, but it's better than a normal day. So right now, just a 20-minute delay that direction. Also, southbound 75, you're slow from Galbraith on down to Paddock. Even above that, it's not looking too bad. So just through that Ronald Reagan merge. I was just looking even over on to, um, on 71, not looking bad around the rest of Tri-State. So not seeing any big delays. It's because it's Friday. It's Friday, yeah. Everybody takes L- off. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, if you live in southwest Ohio, 
and you want to help save America, uh, the doors are going to open uh, for an event at the square at Union Center at 4.30 p.m. tonight in Westchester. Kid Rock is going to be there to perform. Mitt Romney, Ann Romney, Paul Ryan, Jana Ryan are all going to be there. They claim that, I guess, the speaking in festivities or Kid Rock or whatever is going to kick off at 7 p.m. Uh, the Lakota West Band will be playing. Mitt and Ann Romney, I already said them, Paul and Janet. John McCain and his wife, Cindy. Former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice. The all-star team of Republicans. Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal. Texas Governor Rick Perry. The Bulldog. Kansas Governor Sam Brownback. Senators Rob Portman, Ohio, Willie, Marco Rubio, former New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani, Garrett Sablehouse, former Pennsylvania <laughs> Governor Tom Rich, Blondie, Olympic champion speed skater Derek Para, Olympic champion figure skater Scott Hamilton, champion golfer Jack Nicholas, as well as a total of nearly 100 VIP guests. Jeez. Man, they are bringing it all out. And all of these people are going to sing Kumbaya, God Bless America, then walk door to door in your neighborhoods. That is the They're going to get, yeah. All-star cast. It is incredible. Uh, Nicholas? You don't think that they say, hey, it's all in it's, in Ohio? That's it. That's yeah. it. It's all in in Ohio? Yeah. Meanwhile, we got Barack Obama this weekend is going to have Stevie Wonder uh, playing over at the Fifth Third Center for him. And I understand that the only Democrats going to be there are a few local uh, pundits, including Alex T's counterpart, Tim Burke, hmm. because they couldn't get any big Democrat to come in because nobody wanted to come in and do it. That's what I, that's what I heard. I don't know if that's true or that's not. Right. We got Alex T coming up here in about 10 minutes. Yeah, actually, you do. Triantha. You know what? And I get accused all the time, sometimes of bashing Obama too much and being a little negative. And it reminded me of that great movie, Kelly Heroes. You know? Remember the movie Kelly Heroes, which got a great song on there, Michael Curb Congregation, uh, Burning Bridges. But Donald Sutherland plays a guy called Oddball in that movie. And he talks about his buddy Moriarty, about the negative waves. And I'm anxious to share with you, those of you about my age, you're going to know this, but it is hilarious. And uh, maybe I should listen to Oddball more. It looks like we're going to find ourselves another bridge. And where are we going to come up with another bridge? There you go. More negative waves. Have a little faith, baby. Have a little faith. There's another clip. Hit it, Garrett. Oh, man. You guys are crazy. Look, when we was in a Bocaz country, we was assaulted by them tigers. You know what I mean by assaulted, huh? Well, I mean assaulted. Why don't you knock it off with them negative waves? Why don't you dig how beautiful it is out here? Why don't you say something righteous? And hopeful for a change. Just righteous, hopeful. <laughs> Say something righteous and hopeful. Let me though. tell you why, hopeful. oddball. Because under Barack Obama, there's nothing righteous to say other than bash him. <laughs> or hopeful. <laughs> now, <laughs> that's a good point. You know, <laughs> <laughs> righteous. And I, I, t- I tell you, man, he's just a man. Now, Alex T is going to be coming up here. I. The newspaper today, and this was in all the newspapers, uh, it says America can do it with honest, balanced leadership, believe in America. And this is Deere and Company CEO, Delta, Microsoft, Veryphone, Aetna, Goldman Sachs, Time Warner, Motorola, Cisco, Honeywell, Sirius, Qualcomm, GE, Foot Locker, NASDAQ, Bulldog Nation, Wirehouse, Merkin Company, JP Morgan, Class X Radio, United Parcel, Eaton Corporation, Alcoa, the Dow Chemical, Caesars Entertainment, Bulldogs Apparel, Macy's Inc., Verizon Communications, Humana Inc., BulldogsMax.com, The Boeing Company, Price Waterhouse Coopers, Bank of America, Snappy Tomato Pizza, New York Stock Exchange, The Allstate Corporation, Direct TV, Corning Inc., Lowe's Corporation, The Dieters Company, AT&T, Marriott International, Tenneco, State Farm, T. Rowe Price, Caterpillar. And they say raise taxes, reduce expenditures, shrink the debt, be responsible. Well, let me tell you something about these CEOs. Reduce expenditure, shrink the bet. You don't have to raise taxes on anybody. Wait a minute. 
All his company. Well, I was just joking about our companies being involved in this. <laughs> oh, well, well, I just made those up. <laughs> you know what? They, they, the only thing, and this is the only thing I think what these CEOs are saying, I heard one of the guys interviewed, what they're saying is to get a deal done with the Jack Wagon Democrats, go ahead and uh, say, okay, we'll raise the uh, taxes on the filthy rich, even though it's meaningless, just to throw them the bone. I have to admit, if I was president of the United States and to get a deal done to save our country, I'd say, okay, rich people, I'm going to raise your taxes a little bit to make the Jack Wagons happy. I'd, I'd go out there and admit it. I'd say, I'm just doing this to get this done, all right? I would. I have to admit it. I would do it. Well, at least you'd be honest about what it. What do you think, Blondie? Well, I think you'd be honest about it. If you tell them you're doing it. I mean, I know what they had to pay you to get you away from Channel 9, that you're yeah. in that 1% bracket now. Would you pay a little bit more? I'm in that 1% bracket? Yeah. <laughs> I wish I was. You know what? If I was in that 1% hey, hey, bracket, I, I definitely would pay a little bit I'm more. in that 1% bracket. I'm going to tell you right now, I pay enough darn taxes. And I'm just saying I do. I, I, I get it. And being self-employed, you pay even more and you have all those other people working with you. You, you play, I'm sure. That's all the, you know, these filthy rich people, they think that. I don't, yeah. I kind of don't blame them because they bust their ass to get there. They get that money. So it's, I live you know. on naps. What more does my country want me to do for my clients and my fans? You live on what? Naps. Naps. The Service Employees International Union called the SEIU has spent over $70 million on Obama and Democrats this year, making the top outside spender for Democratic campaigns. Boy, that's a real freaking shocker. <laughs> How about this? Peoria Bishop Daniel Janke. Let's give him Oracle status. Let's give him Oracle status. He has ordered priests. You've been awarded Oracle status. To go door to door <laughs> for Mitt Romney. No, he didn't say. To read an anti-Obama letter to parishioners on Sunday, he says politicians who support abortion rights also... Reject Jesus. I agree with you, Peoria Bishop Daniel Janke. Uh, Massachusetts Senate race, Brown versus Warren, $68 million. How about this? Daily caller nails Democratic New Jersey Senator Bob Mendendez. The senator has been accused of paying for sex by two women from the Dominican Republic. They say the senator agreed to pay him $500, but he only received $100. You don't break the rule. You pay the prostitute what they asked for. Or you get in trouble. No, oh, yeah, well. That's right. They'd have paid her. No problem. They wouldn't have had any trouble, would they? Nope. No trouble whatsoever. Somebody said to me, well, at least they hired professionals. Yep. Yeah. Ladies she and gentlemen. She was so hot. <laughs> oh. Did you think so? Oh, I thought she was nah, attractive. Nah, Very attractive. Nah, nah. Coming up <laughs> is good old her. Alex T., the head of the Hamilton County Republican Party, to discuss presidential politics. And we'll talk about some other things. We'll talk about whatever he wants to talk about. R.E.M., shiny, happy people. On Class X Radio. Oh. Eric Dieter's the Bulldog on Class X Radio. You know, I should give out the number every once in a while. 513-201-8891. 513-201-8891. Good old Clint Eastwood, who I still say would have brought the house down even more if he would have walked out dressed as Josie Wales. Like uh, my client and my good buddy and my friend did at my Halloween party. It was so good, man. Uh, but here's Clint on Hannity last night. Well, uh, that's uh, there are people and, and a, a lot of a lot of people who uh, are who feel uh, dissatisfied uh, for, for voting for him last time. Uh, uh, are afraid to admit that they maybe made a mistake. So sure it's better did, to Clint. be overly defensive and just say, well, I'm voting for him again. I, I just tried to give people, in, when I was at the RNC, uh, the idea that maybe they, could, uh, they, could, they should think about uh, other alternatives uh, and uh, even, you know, not, rather than just voting a party line. And, uh, of course, a lot of people uh, who are on the Republican side who voted for him last time will probably have regrets. Uh, but if, if you have regrets, uh, think about somebody else and somebody who's offered uh, something else, like a business background. Uh, 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 Governor Romney has a great business background. He's extremely well-educated. He has several degrees from Harvard, uh, and he's uh, including uh, you know, business and including a law degree. He's, a, he's just a, a kind of a perfect guy for uh, the sure job. Is. 
He's the perfect guy for these times, I think. I really do think. But, of course, Barack Obama says the work's not done yet. We've he has to continue to destroy these America. Past four years. But, Wisconsin, we know our work's not done yet. He's as long speaking, as there's a single lying. American who wants a job but can't find one, our work isn't done. As long as there are families who are working hard as long as falling behind, black unemployment's 25%. Our work isn't done. Doubled on my watch. As long as there's a child languishing in poverty, yeah. barred from opportunity anywhere in this country, 40, our work is not yet done. 45 million people on food stamps. Turn that guy off. I don't want to listen to him anymore. How about Romney? Romney saying, I mean, if you didn't hear this, folks, this is hilarious. Barack Obama wants to now say he wants a cabinet member, secretary of business. Yep. Increasing the bureaucracy. How funny is that? Paul Ryan yesterday pointed out that the secretary of commerce position. Uh, hello, uh, commerce, business, commerce, business, a uh, duh, same thing. The Office of Secretary of Commerce has been vacant for four freaking months. But Romney nails Obama in this clip. Now, I know the president's been uh, trying to figure out some way to suggest he's got some new ideas. Because with all these people out of work, with three million more women in poverty today than when he took office. <laughs> you like that, with ladies? Fifteen more million people on, on food stamps than when he took office. He's How do you got like to that? find something Middle class. to suggest it's going to be better over the next four years. And so we came up with an idea last week, which is he's going to create the Department of Business. <laughs> the audience applause I, I, um, is appropriate. I don't think adding a new chair in his cabinet will help add millions of jobs on Main Street. I, <laughs> Yeah, you're not kidding. It's not going to add jobs on Main Street. Uh, two polls out that worry me a little bit. Uh, Obama at this late stage, and this is the first time, got his approval rating up to 51, as negative as 45, and Romney's 50 and it's 48. Let's hope that that's a temporary, temporary thing, temporary thing. We can only hope. And the unemployment numbers, folks, we are watching because that's why we got the news here. And we're counting down to the jobs report. Uh, I think we're going to get it before our show is over. If not, we're going to just uh, preempt all Class X radio shows for the rest of the day until it comes. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. They'd probably let you stay on the air. Um, how about this guy? Bishop E.W. Jackson, the Exodus faith minister, gave a speech. Oh, my God. It recorded. I think it might even be a commercial about how he's a black pastor, how the black community have been led down the wrong path by the Democrats on abortion, same-sex marriage, the Democratic Party, on and on and on, and it's time to go in a different direction. I mean, it was beautiful. Just let them rip. And they say, well, the blacks are going to vote for Obama at least 90%, maybe as high as 95 like last time. I find that absolutely incredible I find that racist. I find it so wrong on so many fronts. What if 90% of white people voted for uh, Mitt Romney? Everybody would go nuts, wouldn't they? Wouldn't they go nuts? I yep. would think so. I think they would go nuts. But and, how many people really and, run around and, saying what they're, they're going to do? And speaking of that, get this. This is from a Bulldog Nation member, Marty. Eric, a friend, asked me if I heard the commercial on The Wiz... I think urging black people to get out and vote for Obama to keep the white man out of the office. Really? Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but my goodness. Mm. I, I've listened to that station a little bit, and some of the ads they run are just ri ridiculous. And they know all they have to do is get them to vote, because obviously if they vote, it's for Obama. I'm going to be at the NAACP Northern Kentucky dinner, and I was told I get to speak, and if I get a chance to speak... I'm going to be like Virgil. I'm going to be bold. All right, you got a traffic report there, Denise? Well, we Real can quick. certainly give you one. Absolutely. Well, it's updating. Give us one. Um, uh, forget about it. If it's updating. I'm already, I'm we'll already right there. Here we go. 
They'd cleared up the accident on the Norwood lateral, so that one's gone. But right now, you're still slow. Northbound 7175, just from Buttermilk to the bridge. Also, 75 right around Galbraith to Paddock. All right. I love this song. Patty Smith, Because the Night. Written by Bruce Springsteen on Class X Radio. Eric Dieter's the Bulldog on Class X Radio. Little scheduling move. Alex Tree Antifilu will be calling up in a few minutes to discuss the presidential politics uh, here in the state of Ohio, it's particularly in Hamilton County. Uh, yesterday, it was revealed that there was a email from the consulate uh, asking, you know, being concerned about everything that was going on in the consulate. And by the way, it cracks me up that Obama can claim Al-Qaeda has lost strength. It is clear as day that Al-Qaeda is controlling Libya. I mean, what they did relative to the consulate, that was pretty clear. And a magazine, an actual magazine company, found two letters written on September 11th by Ambassador Stevens expressing some of these concerns and this is after the FBI allegedly had been there already. What? And as I confirm with Mike Zimmerman here, how do the veterans vote for Barack Obama <laughs> with this kind of stuff going on? It's amazing. And it's been now shown that Ambassador Stevens called for help during the attack. During the attack! And that he reached the Deputy Secretary Hicks who called in the report. Now, despite all this going on, because the network news and the major newspapers all downplay it, the average American, according to this poll, 47% think that Obama's misled us, and 44% say he hasn't met. I mean, it ought to be 90% at least misled us in Libya. It's amazing to me. I mean, I just don't get it. Uh, the latest Rasmussen poll in Ohio is uh, two points, 50 to 48. And let's just hope that that keeps going. Is that Alex T? You can go ahead and put him on the air, buddy. Uh, joining us now is Alex Tree Antifilu from the Hamilton County Republican Party. He's the chairman. And uh, he's, you know, everybody know who he is around town. Alex, how are you? Great Bulldog. Great to be with you. Man, I'm glad to have you on here because it looks like, and I wanted you to share with us anything you can share with us, the inside, so Bulldog Nation uh, feels fully informed. It seems to me, in light of what's going on in Westchester uh, tonight, where they're bringing like everybody, the complete team in, and Kid Rock, that they really recognize the need uh, to do much better than McCain did, which I don't think is going to be hard to do, uh, in Hamilton County, Claremont County, Warren County, Butler County, in southwest Ohio, and why don't you just tell everybody what's going on, how's it looking out there, what the game plan is, and please promise me victory, or else I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. Oh, well, <laughs> thanks for the <laughs> chance to do that with you, Eric. I Listen, uh, things look very, very good. Uh, we, we feel very good about our effort. This is not the uh, McCain campaign of four years ago. The energy on the ground is overwhelming. I mean, we're going to get, you know, over 10,000, maybe twice that tonight. I haven't seen the latest figures, but we're going to get a big crowd, you know, here in southwest Ohio. And, you know, we matter. This part of the state matters. We have to deliver a maximum number of votes out of this part of the state to make a difference. You know, we're lucky, and you're, we're lucky to have a voice like yours out there talking to our people. You know, we have to, uh, we can make a difference here. We, we don't live in California that's guaranteed to be for Barack Obama or New York. We live in a swing state here in Ohio. A lot of us do. And, you know, it makes a, a critical difference how we do here. So I'm feeling very good. Good. Uh, you know, we're going to, um, you know, we're going to outperform the polls. But that always happens for Republicans. We're going to outperform the polls. So if this thing's close, uh, you know, we're going to walk away with the victory Tuesday. Willie, uh, told me back in the uh, McCain campaign back in 2008, he told me how members of the Hamilton County Republican Party were saying to him that, you know, the McCain campaign, like, did not even have a ground organization at all. That was kind of a joke. I get the impression that the combination of the RNC, local uh, Hamilton, uh, local county parties like led by you, and along with the Romney campaign, that everything's in lockstep 
And it seems also to me that that enthusiasm is big time. And the, the polls show that the enthusiasm gap exists to the detriment of the Democrats and to the benefit of the Republican Party. I, I know somebody that went to the jet manufacturing rally, and I'm sure you were there, and she told me that it was electric. And I told her, knowing what I know about campaigns, you usually get a feel of a winner or and a loser. And she said, oh, my goodness, it felt like a winner. Is that what you're feeling out there? Absolutely. And I was at that event. And I'll tell you the event that, that really put me on the right track, and this was actually before the debates where Governor Romney did so well. The first event that Governor Romney had after the Republican convention was at the Museum Center here in, in Cincinnati. And, uh, you know, the, that event was unbelievable, very well attended. And, you know, a lot of the pundits are talking about the debate and what the debate meant to this campaign and that being a turnaround. Well, I'll tell you what. From the moment I returned from that convention, and I was lucky enough to have a chance to talk to that audience, it was just an electric crowd there at the I heard that. center, and that that was the first indication I had that we had real momentum and a real you know a real ability to win this thing. So it's going to be close. We're going to watch it closely, but you know we feel it. I feel a winner to, to use Good. your words. Good, and you know another thing about the whole uh, election of of Romney, and you know and during the primary, you know I I'm made fun of him. I made fun of all of them, but I also praised him. I tell you right now, Alex, Mitt Romney uh, seems to me to have the right stuff. And I don't agree with Mitt Romney on everything, and he's there's no candidate that is perfect. But when you look at his integrity, you look at his knowledge, you look at his business experience, you look at the track record from uh, governor of Massachusetts and working with the Democrats to the Salt Lake City saving the Olympics to everything that he's done. And the guy, his right-hand man, I'm really impressed with him, that Robert Smith guy. And, and everything that he does, it just seems to me that Mitt Romney, unlike Barack Obama, that Mitt Romney has the right stuff to be actually, and, and I think the Times are going to call for this, and I think he can deliver it. I think Mitt Romney, unlike McCain, unlike uh, Obama, unlike Kerry, unlike even George Bush, I feel like Mitt Romney has the stuff to be a great president a la Ronald Reagan. I really do. There's just something about him. I think he's that kind of a leader, and we need greatness right now. Well, of course, I agree with you, and I it's funny, Eric, I've not heard you say that, and I'm glad to hear it because I've been saying the same thing. Really? This is a guy, you know, well, I've been saying Good. it you know, kind of privately that I just think he's very bright. He's, he's probably the brightest guy we've had, and that's not to take anything right. away from you know, several of our last right. years. But in terms of just sheer intelligence, this is a very bright guy. Right. And he demonstrated leadership results, a business experience. Uh, this is a turnaround specialist, and, I mean, America needs that right now, so I... Yeah, I agree with you. He he has the right stuff. He'll put a good team in place. I don't think his ego is in the way. No. Like our current president, you know, I think this guy wants to do great things for the country. He's poised to, to, to get a big win Tuesday. Before I let you go, I also, uh, I could talk to you for hours about this, but I know you got some work to do. I want to tell you something. I crack up. Um, this is just my, I just imagine this going on. You know, they wanted to run against him because he was the rich guy and, and this class warfare. So he was the, they thought he was the perfect foil. And then, of course, they wasted all that money because people are looking at Mitt Romney and they don't see a bad guy. But I crack up, Alex. I would love, I mean, I would love to see Count Chocula, David Axelrod, and the rest of the Chicago Mafia pulling their freaking hair out. Because all they do is that gutter, dirty destruction. I mean, they took out Herman Cain because they didn't want to run against a black Republican, so they took him out. But to pull their hair out, that they have absolutely nothing. And this blows me away because I'm a sinner, not a saint. It blows me away. And, and I can't imagine how frustrated Axelrod is that they can't find any dirt. They haven't been able to find anything on Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan's integrity. And it just goes to show you, that it's not always bad to, you know, campaign for and have the nominee be that clean because you take that away from the arsenal, and that's what they're all about. They're all about those dirty politics. But I, th I bet you Axelrod has gone nuts that he can't find any dirt on Mitt Romney. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, you're exactly right. Uh, both of these, these uh, candidates on our side – are gentlemen, uh, you know, they appear to be terrific husbands and fathers. Uh, you know, the, the, the character question is not a question on our side one bit. 
Uh, again, they, they've tried to paint him with this this rich guy brush. It hasn't worked. No, the American people don't no. believe that. No. And you're you're exactly right. These are two gentlemen, and they're fine, upstanding people. And yeah, I mean the Chicago crew. I mean they they're going to do their thing, but it hasn't worked. I'll tell you one more thing quickly on this topic. If you look at this campaign that Mitt Romney has run up in the polls, down in the polls, you know, in the primary, he got challenged by Gingrich. He got challenged by Santorum. One thing has remained. He's been very steady. You haven't seen right. turmoil in the inside right. of the campaign. You haven't right. seen the terminating of a campaign manager. He's right. been a very steady, steady hand on the on the you know controls of this campaign. That's the kind of person we've got running. And 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 the debate. I, I I give all the credit to him. I don't give the credit to anybody but Mitt Romney. You know what? All along, Mitt Romney, in my opinion, knew, and Robert Smith did too, because he's his right hand man. They they knew. Hey, nothing crazy. Keep it cool, and we're going to kick his butt in the debate. And I just feel like Mitt Romney knew, based upon his experience, his knowledge of the issues and everything else, he could walk in that debate and just clean his clock, and he did. I mean, he cleaned his clock. He cleaned his clock, I think, in all three debates. And that just showed to me that he does have what it takes. Where Alex, I really appreciate This has been Alex Triantafilu, uh, Alex T, as I like to call him, the chairman of the Hamlin County Republican Party. And Alex, if you have, have anything you want to ever champion, uh, please give me a call. I really appreciate you coming on this morning. Happy to be with you, Eric. Best of luck to you. All right. Man, let's bring home a winner in Hamilton County. Boy, you know what? You can tell. Trust me, I've, I've been in p- campaigns, okay? You can tell the difference between somebody involved in the campaign that says, oh, yeah, we're going to win, we're going to win, and you're thinking, eh, I don't think they believe that. And somebody that really believes it, you can tell in his voice they're feeling good. And he's a guy that's going to know some inside scoop. You know, to get out the vote. You heard what he said, folks? Let me explain this. He said we outperform the polls. We always out. What that means is by their get-out-the-vote effort – and everything else, they do better than what the polls. So if Rasmussen is showing Romney up two in Ohio or Fox News showing them dead heat, what he's saying is they're going to win because they're going to outperform the polls. Mm-hmm. Got a great got a great song there for us, buddy? I do. Meatloaf, bat out of hell on Class X Radio. This is a God Bless America. Eric Dieters, the Bulldog on Class X Radio. You know one thing, you can never count the old uh, crooks out. These voting machine issues scare the hell out of me because you've got uh, these little quirky things going. Denise, give us a traffic report since you got left out that segment. Well, that's okay. We had an important uh, caller there. Eastbound 275, there's an accident right around Ronald Reagan, and that has you backed up all the way back to the 275 interchange. So if you're heading in that northeastbound direction towards 75, you're going to run into some delays there. I was actually just watching the cameras. Also, an accident on, on 131. This one has injuries as well at Monroe Marathon Road. And then on 74, there is an accident on the left shoulder. That accident, well, that's right at uh, 275. So that could be even in the back up there from the other accident that is on 275 heading northbound. So that one's on 74. There's also an accident southbound 71 right at uh, Taft. I am not seeing any problems there. The only delays I'm seeing really 71, 75 from Dixie to the bridge and just at the Ronald Reagan merge on 75. So. All right. Thank you. I want to. Thank Alex T for yeah, him, the County great. Republican Party chairman for calling in. Uh, we'll have him hopefully as a regular guest, and we want to find out what's going on the inside. I'm going to shift gears here a little bit. Uh, we're not finished with the presidential election, but I thought you would find this uh, interesting. Uh, yesterday, out in Boone County, I'm representing David Dooley, who is charged, and this was all over the news. All the news reported it. David Dooley is charged with the murder of Michelle Mockby, and. He is, he's maintaining his innocence. We actually got a clip from it. We became friends. I This is his wife. was there when she had two kids, and I love Michelle, and I pray every day that we do find the right person that did this to her, and because it's not David. That is Janet, uh, David's wife, uh, speaking yesterday at the courthouse. But he, this is something that's very interesting, okay? I mean, I just find it very interesting. Um, when I talk to David and I, he maintained his innocence, I always say, Hey, it's time to, you know, tell the world that you're innocent. That's what you ought to do. Well, he agreed to do that. Well, the Boone County jail would not allow 
video cameras in the jail. Get this. Not only did all the local television stations want to interview him, Dr. Phil wanted to interview him from the jail. Well, really? the Boone County Jailer would not allow video in the jail. So we waited till yesterday. After the hearing where the judge denied the bond reduction, I went up to the bench and I said, hey, judge, you know, we, and I had to talk. I, I could have just not spoke about it, but as soon as the hearing was over, the deputies would have taken, you know, David right out of the courtroom. So that's why I wanted to ask the judge if my client could have 15 minutes to talk to the media. He wanted to declare his innocence and answer questions. Now, just imagine this. The guy is accused of murder, kidnapping, and tampering with evidence, and he wants to address the media. Now, in my opinion, you got the constitutional right to do that. If you think you're innocent, you should be allowed to discuss to the media, say what you want to do, and so forth and so on. And I want to stress this. Uh, judge Schrand, the Boone Circuit judge, is an outstanding judge, an outstanding judge. But the prosecutor, Linda Talley Smith, uh, and she denied this on one of the news reports. She said she just expressed concerns. Uh, you can call it expressed concerns, objection, or whatever. She objected to my client talking to the media. Now, have you ever heard in the history of American jurisprudence a prosecutor or law enforcement objecting to a defendant talking to the media? They like it. Why? Because they'll say something inconsistent. They'll say something that could be used against them. So here I am representing a guy that they want to hold on a million dollars bond who maintains his innocence, and they object to him telling the world that he's innocent. I found it bizarre. Isn't so, that illegal? Well, here's what's going to happen. The judge said, give me um, some briefs, give me whatever. And next, and November 14th, which is two weeks away at the pretrial, he'll hear the motion and he'll, he'll make a consideration whether he'll allow him to do that. Okay. And I think he will. He didn't say he wouldn't. Now, I'm totally familiar with this law because we had to address this with the Sarah Jones case. And Linda Talley brought up, you know, legal ethics and all that stuff. And it cracked me up because here's, here's what the law is and here's what it is ethically. First of all, he's not a lawyer. So if David Dooley wants to talk, that's his issue. But here's the thing. If you are accused of a crime and it's in the public realm, it's of public interest, you're allowed to talk about it. It's that simple. And you're also allowed to talk about it if the other side has spoken about it. So get this. The sheriff has talked about it. The sheriff's spokesperson's talked about it. The prosecutor's talked about it publicly. The family of Michelle Mockby, God bless them, have spoken out about it. So why in the heck shouldn't he be allowed to freaking talk to the media? And I just think it's funny. If I was a member of the public, I'd be like, uh, what? The prosecutor doesn't want to let the defendant tell the world he's innocent and answer questions? By the way, he went to he cooperated with the police. And uh, anyway, bottom line is I had that yesterday. Now, here's some more legal things which I think you will find of interest. On, we have prepared and we are filing a lawsuit. And this is newsworthy. You know, I don't talk about, I only talk about exciting stuff or newsworthy things. And you're hearing this first on Class X Radio. Class X Radio, you're hearing it first. I'm representing four workers from the casino floor collapse. And we are filing this lawsuit on Monday. And we are having a press conference at 3.30 at the lobby of the Hamilton County a common pleas uh, court, and we sent out the press release today, and they and their wives, my client and their wives, are going to be there to talk to the media. And I'm just saying this, folks. This is kind of, I'm very proud of this. I've taken over this case from each one of these uh, clients of mine had a different lawyer, and not one of the lawyers was smart enough to figure out how to sue and who to sue and everything else because of these workers' cop restrictions. These, these hard workers, these hard workers, these are concrete workers. They're hard workers. Workers' comp system has screwed them. The state of Ohio has screwed them. The state of Ohio is going to make money on the casino. The casino company is going to make money on the casino. Messer's making money. The subcontract, everybody's making money on the casinos. But these workers, it is incredible what the hell that they have been through. It's very sad, actually. And... Um, I've got them. I mean, we have developed the theory. Uh, we, we've got our causes of action. Uh, this isn't flim-flam or what do I get? Frivolous. It's solid as a rock. 
And the lawyer for Messer uh, has fused re- respond. We asked her some questions, and she she can tell by our questions. She could see that we're going down a road, and I, I think she's pooping her britches. And OSHA, oh, get this, folks. Did you know this? OSHA gave up its inspection duties to the contractor, who then didn't inspect. Hmm. Can you imagine that? A pour, a concrete pour like that on a floor, and there's only two bolts when there should be 12 bolts, and it comes crashing down. These stories are unbelievable. So we're filing that on uh, Monday, and at 3.30 there's going to be a press conference, and I think it's going to be a pretty big deal. So there's an update on some legal things that are in the news. When we come back, we'll have more radio superbity, including on the big rally tonight in Westchester. And now this is Garrett's favorite band, I think. Red Hot Chili Peppers, Californication. Eric Dieter's the Bulldog on Class X Radio. I want to apologize to Class X listeners in Bulldog Nation. Um, We cut the songs off at the 15s and the 30s, but because it was Red Hot Chili Peppers, uh, Garrett, just let it roll. So, uh, good job, Garrett. We're now behind. Hey, it's all right. No, you, that's, you know that's a long break to begin with. I only let it go maybe three minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> we don't That's mind. not long at all in radio time. That's a good song. Like Chuck said, the Chili Peppers are badass. I know. Uh, traffic report, Denise, please. You know, really, the only thing left over out there is an accident on 74, just east of 275, and I'm really not seeing much of a problem there. Just a little slow on 71, 75, still from just around Kyle's on down to the bridge. It's uh, Friday. All right. And, uh, uh-oh, here we go. Breaking news I from know. USA Today. You got I, it. I got it right over. October jobs report, 171,000 jobs added. But guess what, folks? The jobless rate goes up to 7.9 from 7.8. Thank, I, sorry, folks. Thank God it went up just a percentage point to get us through the election. I'm being honest. Unlike all these other people, these politicians who can't say it because I want every American to have a job. Everybody knows that. But I will shamelessly admit the weekend before the election I did not want to see that number go down and then Obama act like his recession is working when we know it's not. We now know, well, we already know it's not, but now Romney gets to say for the last three days, well, unemployment's up. And of course, it's so, you know what, Romney and Ryan missed the opportunity big time to go all around the country saying unemployment's 11%, unemployment's 11%, unemployment 11%. It would have drove Obama nuts it would have driven axelrod nuts and see that's the kind of thing that the democrats do obama and axelrod go around the country saying oh we didn't lie about libya we didn't lie about libya and it drives the republicans nuts because they know they did lie about libya they could have given the same medicine honestly to the democrats by saying oh guess what folks 11 percent 11 percent when they said no it's not no it's not they said "Uh uh-uh we all know that the quote-unquote real unemployment is 11 percent because people dropping out the workforce aren't being calculated and that's something new under the obama administration that they're doing and the real unemployment's 11 percent and as i have said before uh why wouldn't you want to report the real unemployment (laughs) i mean come on the real unemployment instead of the bogus unemployment but it went up from 7.8 to 7.9. Not good for the president. Thank God. I was worried to death that it would go down like the 7.6, even though it's a fraudulent number anyway. Oh, goodness. That is huge. Yep. Huge, huge, huge. And how about the Labor Department? They were, they were thinking about the land because of New York. <laughs> Gosh. Remember last, the September report, they've revised upwards. And they made an excuse there. They didn't count California. Hello, California is a third of the country. And they didn't count it. <sighs> Boy, this voting uh, airs makes me nervous. North Carolina, Nevada, Ohio. You know, you press the name of Romney and it shows up Barack Obama. Hmm. And they quote unquote have to recalibrate the machines. Holy cow. How do you go back for all that time frame? By the way, another argument against, another argument against, Early voting. Uh, I, I, don't, I still don't get the early voting. 
Yeah, it makes sense. It, it, well, th- like I said, then election day should just be the deadline to vote. Yeah, you don't have all I mean, the information that you need. Yeah. Uh, how about this, folks? Americans for Tax Reform reports Americans will have to file a separate form with the IRS in 2014 to declare that they have health insurance and identify the personal information to verify it. Why? There is no other way for the IRS to enforce the individual mandate. How do you like that, folks? More forms, more tax returns, more everything. More more paperwork. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, if you uh, don't have a kid in high school football, well, in Ohio, you don't. Most of the games are tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. So come on out to Westchester and let it rock. Kid rock. You got to right. love it. Yep. All right, we're going to play a great song. Dire Straits, Walk a Life. It's a beautiful song. You mean we don't have a Kid Rock song over there? Yeah, we got a Kid Rock cowboy, but we don't have the whole thing. We didn't want to dish Kid Rock. We got to get the. We need to get the whole. We got to get more. uh, More kid. More kid. But in the meantime, on Class X Radio. Eric Dieter's the Bulldog on Class X Radio. I will guarantee you, somewhere in the Romney campaign, they were high fiving and saying yes. Uh, not because they don't, they're happy about the job, people not having a job. They just know that those numbers are all fake and phony and uh, going in the wrong direction would hurt them. Uh, final traffic report real quick, Denise. It's still pretty quiet out there. I mean, things have really eased up out there this morning. Just a little slow on northbound 75 right around Mitchell and 7175 just right around Kyle's. Uh, this is a very interesting anecdote. Uh, one of my Bulldog Nation members reports to me, Says, got word yesterday that a friend of mine who works for the railroad is getting laid off because the coal industry isn't shipping coal. Of course, we know that Barack Obama, I mean, is that hilarious that Barack Obama can act like uh, he's for energy independence when he publicly said during the campaign last time he wants to bankrupt the coal industry? Well, it's working. Now, here is something that the the Democrats always attack the Republicans. They use that word trickle down. You know, oh, it doesn't trickle down. Things are going better. Are you kidding me? Have we not just found out since 2008 that the quote unquote trickle down is true? Why? Because in the 1990s, in the last decade, things were so good. Everybody was employed. 5% unemployment. People are all buying houses, doing stuff, going on vacations. And what happened when the rich folk started losing money? Everything went to hell in a handbasket. But here's something that's original thought of mine, always cracks me up, that they want to argue that doesn't work when they're completely wrong, is how about trickle-down negative? Uh, hello? Trickle-down negative. Coal industry gets walloped. Coal companies get hurt. Railroad gets hurt. They lay off employees. And the whole business, the people that make the coal mining, uh, tipples everything, just... It's incredible. Economics 101, folks. It's easy. Um, Some polls. Because we're not going to be back here, of course, until tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Until Monday. The election eve, which will be fun. And then we'll be in here election morning. That'll be a blast. Wisconsin, are you ready for this? You wonder why Barack Obama... And remember what Alex T. said about Hamilton County. They know that they will uh, perform better than the polls. Wisconsin, and I see Scott Walker right now is on Fox News. He's calling here. Oh, no, we're, our shows are. Uh, Romney in Wisconsin is tied with Obama in a poll. He's tied in Wisconsin. Wisconsin hasn't gone for Republicans since uh, good old uh, 84. Colorado, Romney, 50-47. Guess where he went yesterday? Obama, uh, Colorado. Uh, Rasmussen Thursday, 49-47. That uh, Sabato guy that does some polling, he's on those national talk shows, talked about He goes, don't believe what comes out of their mouths. Believe where the candidates go. Well, if he's going, if he's sending Clinton to, the other day, to Minnesota, and he's got Biden going to Pennsylvania, and he's going to Wisconsin, Nevada, and Colorado, he knows he's got problems in those swing states that he didn't think he was going to have a problem with. Now, how important is Ohio? It's a great way to end the show. How, although we got plenty of time here. How important is Ohio? Uh, let's see. Tonight at 7, beginning at 4.30, and the show starts at 7, and uh, Union Center in Westchester, 
How important is Ohio in this part of Ohio? Well, let's see. Kid Rock, uh, Mitt Romney, Ann Romney, Paul Ryan, Jana Ryan, Giuliani, uh, Rubio, Condoleezza Rice, McCain. I'm on. I mean, they're all coming. <laughs> Why? That's impressive. Just like that poster said, pay attention to where they go. Just like I tell you right now, I watch Genius in Action. Uh, two election cycles ago when I did uh, back-to-back election nights with Willie. And while I'm doing this election night with Willie, by the way, that one Jack Wagon they ended up fired was there too, and he didn't know anything. It was fun. Uh, Willie and I just shot him up. Anyway, Willie's working the phone. And he's sitting there telling me that because he knows Ohio politics. He started telling me. I mean, it was incredible. And, you know, the, an- the analysis, and Willie always talks about you got it. Just like Alex T. You know, Alex T. just came on to us. They got to rack up numbers. McCain lost Hamilton County. George Bush won this area big. That's how he beat John Kerry. You know, it's that simple. They know that they got to win Hamilton County, Warren County, Claremont County, uh, Butler County, the surrounding counties, Brown House, and they got to win it big. And you know, to prove it, the Friday before the election, they got 100 surrogates coming at the same time. It's amazing. Why wouldn't you get pumped up and go to that? I mean, if you're an Ohio voter, I mean, are you kidding me? You get to see all those historical mm-hmm. figures in one place? Can you imagine what the security is going to be like? Mm-mm. I'm surprised <laughs> you didn't uh, say anything, volunteer yourself to go with Alex tonight. Well, uh, Sean Maloney's supposed to get me some tickets. And uh, so I might be oh. going, although I want to tell you something. <laughs> You know how I am. I'm anti-social Friday night. Yeah, but traffic, you need to go. Traffic, to crowds, go. everything else. I'll just send Chuck. Fight the bullet. Hey, Chuck. No, no, no. Hey, no it's not Chuck, the same. Chuck, get the microphone. You got to go. Chuck, you're... You got to go. I, I went to tell you. Chuck, now I'm not going to make you go, Chuck, or, or ask you to go. I'm not going to ask you to go because okay. I don't... He's not going to ask you. He's going to tell you. But okay. is it, Chuck, if I asked you to go, though, buddy, you'd go for the bulldog, wouldn't you? Yes, I would. Hey, I, I would go, too. You want to pop up the tickets? I love this guy. I'm able to say I love this guy. Can I have pre- can give me a press uh, pass that back. says Eric Dieter's, you know, Bulldog Mafia? Hey, well, oh, they know me by now. And you know somebody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, do. they do. And you know somebody else we could send and he would go because let's just go, call it like it is. My son-in-law's ate up with it all now. Uh-huh. He, mm-hmm. he, he, he works for me. He works with Chuck. We got so much business. We have two private investigators and my mm-hmm. son-in-law, Chad, and he, he's ready to charge any. We could say, Chad, you got to go up there. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Charlie and I got to go up there. Mm-hmm. Bulldog asked me to go. <laughs> Fired up about it. Hey, do you oh, think he- it's wise for them to have uh, McCain there? No. Yeah. should have left him at home. I know. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Willie told me, and I mentioned this to Alex, he told me that last time, 2008, McCain's people didn't coordinate anything, and like people needed a yard sign, people wanted to have a, like there was like Zippo organization here. Uh, that ain't happening this time. They are mobilized. Well, Denise have a great weekend. Jake have a great weekend. Chuck have a great weekend. Garrett, Everybody have out an there. okay weekend. No, have a great weekend. <laughs> yeah. Wiz have a great weekend. Bulldog Nation have a great weekend. I hope you have a great football and political weekend. Every dog has their day. I hope tomorrow is yours. Class X Radio, I love you. Bulldog Nation, I love you. This is What is Life by George Harrison on Class X Radio.